Oh man, has Jerome Powell just crashed the markets again? In this video, I'm quickly going to give you an update on what Jerome Powell just said. As you can see, we've got the S&P now down over the last three hours, down on the day in Bitcoin, falling on the day too, now flirting precariously at that 20,000 mark. Remember, if we lose this 20,000 mark on Bitcoin, we could be heading towards 18,000 from the technical pattern, which I've been sharing with you on my previous video today. This video is brought to you by Big Air. Links in the description. Get yourself set up. But what did Jerome Powell say? Well, he said quite a few things. Jerome Powell first said that the US economy is in strong shape. He said he can reduce inflation still to all the way from where it is now, 8.6% down to 2% whilst maintaining strong labor. He also shared something which I'm going to take as a bit of positive. I'm going to explain why. And to do so, I'm going to have to go back to some basic economic studies back in my A-level days here in the UK. Uh, so make sure you stay tuned with me till the very end. Hit up the like button and don't forget to subscribe. He also said that it is now indeed becoming more challenging. Inflation's been there for a period of time now, and he risks more of a harder landing with potential recession. He said the risk is, I'm quoting, the risk is that because of the multiplicity of shocks, you start to transition to a higher inflation regime. Our job is literally to prevent that from happening, and we will prevent that from happening. That's what he said. We will not allow a transition from a low inflation environment into a high inflation environment. In other words, what he is trying to say is, you know, this inflation is not going to last. We're not going to let it stay one way or the other markets. And he's talking to markets one way or the other. We're coming crashing back down. And what he means by that is either we're going to come down with a recession or we're going to come down without a recession. What's not negotiable is I'm not going to just because the market's crying and in pain, I'm not going to take my foot off the gas and let inflation stay rampant. That is the message we've got from here. And obviously, the markets don't like that type of tough speak. He also said, we hope that growth will remain positive, although we saw that the GDP for Q1 was revised down from 1.5 to 1.6%, showing we were in a deeper recession than we previously fought in Q1. And he said, it is our aim, and we believe there are pathways to achieve that. But the bit I want to focus on is the bit where he said inflation could come down quite rapidly. Because remember, my whole idea around how long this bear market could last for on crypto and, and the stock market is based on when do we start seeing inflation really start peak, uh, coming down? Because when we see it start hurtling down, if we can get this hurtling down of inflation, then we can start having conversations of, oh, are we going to get a pause in a rate hike? Oh, could we go from 75 to 50 and then 25 and then have a pause, right? This would be really, really good. And that is what's eventually going to lead us to recover on this market. And what Powell gave us a clue of is because of the vertical supply curve. He's saying because of this phenomenon called the, ver in the inelastic supply curve, because of that, we are in a position where we could see inflation come down quite rapidly. Now, that is a really positive sign. And I do very, very quickly want to explain how this works using some basic, basic economics. And the first thing you'll need to know is what is a basic supply and demand curve? Now, my, econ my economics teacher is going to tell me off if I get this wrong. But in essence, you've got your supply curve, your traditional supply curve. As price increases, suppliers generally produce more. So supply will go up and to the right. Your downward slope demand curve as price goes up people want to buy less where the two intersect is your equilibrium and this is the price that people will pay and the quantity that will be produced by the suppliers okay this is your normal functioning supply and demand curve now what has happened during what we've been facing is a supply shock we face a supply shock where you created a vertical inelastic, in other words, if for those who are a bit more familiar with economics, inelastic supply curve. That means you have a vertical supply curve because suppliers cannot produce more than a fixed amount. So Q here, suppliers are saying, regardless of how much you want to buy, we can't produce this much, right? Think of Tesla, think of the amount of iron ore available or lithium or any other supply parts which are people are struggling with right now. It's limiting supply. We have supply bottlenecks and therefore supply sits at a vertical style supply curve like this. Now, of course, when you have a vertical supply curve, but demand increases, i.e. demand goes from demand two to demand one, look what happens to price. Price climbs from P2 to P1 very steeply, much more steeper than if you simply had a price inc a demand increase in the traditional sense. In a traditional sense, you will see a price increase, but not as much as more suppliers will produce to offset the demand, right? More suppliers will want to get involved. Whereas when you've got an elastic supply, when you've got vertical supply here, the price can spike up very high, explaining some of the rationale behind why we're seeing such record inflation in the US.
But the counter, therefore, is also true. And the counter is, if we can control demand side, which is what the Fed can do, the Fed can't affect supply. The Fed can't do anything to change this line. But what they can do, the Fed can come in and say, we're going to reduce demand. And we're going to do so by increasing interest rates. We're going to do so by quantitative tightening. And so what they're saying is, we'll go back from, from this demand and we'll bring it down. And when you do so, you'll get just as quick a fall back down in prices and therefore inflation as well. So really, really bullish sentiment here, uh, if we look at it in the right way, that maybe Jerome Powell and the Fed are getting thinking that, hang on a second, we're not going to climb down in inflation in the traditional sense of how slowly you would normally go up and come down. But because we had that drastic rise up in inflation, we could see that drastic fall down. So this is really interesting, but we will need to wait for the figures to see if that happens. We need to wait for the next CPI reading. We get a PCE reading tomorrow, which we'll look out for, no doubt, cover on this channel. And then we'll see how crypto reacts, because the reality is, I don't think we're going to get a sustained rally to the upside, particularly not to all-time highs and create a new bull market, if and until this inflation issue is resolved, if and until we see inflation really start to come down, Jerome Powell and the Fed start talking about pausing, and then markets can start to get a little bit excited again. But right now, we're still at the start innings of this. Inflation needs to come down. The Fed has a job to do. They're not going to stop until they do it. And they even said that the worst thing right now is to do nothing rather than uh, to do it and then fall into recession. In other words, they're chip committed. They're going to push on ahead. If they need to drive the economy into recession, they will do so, but they're not going to allow inflation to stay high for a long period of time. There you have it, guys. There is a quick emergency update on what Jerome Powell had to say and how the markets are reacting. Bitcoin literally just wicking now down back under 20,000 again. Will this be the, the uh, straw that breaks, that breaks the camel's back and finally pushes Bitcoin back down to go test those 17,600 levels again? Or will Bitcoin hold some strength? We need to monitor this over the coming hours and days thanks for watching guys do check out BitGet links in the description i will be giving away free money to people who sign up using my BitGet link in future episodes don't forget to smash up the like button and subscribe i'll see you in the next one